She's one of the most outspoken critics of the controversial Church of Scientology, having grown up in a religion that believes in intergalactic theology. Tonight, actress Leah Remini, one of Scientology's highest profile ex-members, taking on its biggest star, Tom Cruise, now finding herself in the crosshairs. She sat down one-on-one -on -one with my Nightline co-anchor, Dan Harris. She was not only TV royalty, starring in the hit CBS sitcom, The King of Queens, but she was also Scientology royalty, gracing the cover of the church's official celebrity magazine. Now, however, Leah Remini has transformed from a fierce defender of the faith. Without any Scientology organization, things are not gonna change on this planet. To the most famous member to leave and go public, with her new book called Troublemaker about to hit shelves, the church is calling her a liar, self-absorbed, rude, and embarrassing, as Leah levels scathing criticisms against Scientology and its most well-known follower, Tom Cruise. I think it's a privilege to call yourself a Scientologist, and it's something that you have to earn. In fact, as you will hear tonight, Leah says the beginning of the end of her more than three decades in Scientology came at the Tom Cruise, Katie Holmes wedding. But Leah's Scientology story started, she says, when her mom, Vicky, fresh off a divorce, threw herself into the religion founded by science fiction writer L. Ron Hubbard. When you know the basics of human existence and so forth, you could apply them in almost any sphere. In your understanding, what is the goal and the promise of Scientology? To free mankind, to make a sane world. Eventually, Vicky decided to bring her daughters, Leah and Nicole, in and put them on course. What does that mean, go on course? You learn how to apply the, the techniques of Scientology to yourself and others. So for a kid who was always looking around comparing herself to other people, yeah. to be part of a faith where you had a mission to save... The planet. That must, save the planet. That must have been a big deal. When Leah was a teenager, her mom, Vicky, decided to enroll her in the Sea Org, the pious, uniformed, full-time religious order of the church, and to move the family down to Scientology's spiritual headquarters in Clearwater, Florida, known as the Flag Land Base. They provide room and board, and you work there, and you sign a billion-year contract. A, a billion-year contract? Correct. And you, as a child, mm -hmm. signed this contract? Correct. There it is in writing, Scientologists believe in reincarnation and Sea Org members are expected to keep working every time they come back. That's Leah and Nicole in their Sea Org uniforms. Smiles notwithstanding, she very quickly started causing problems in the Sea Org. What kind of trouble was she getting into? I think mainly it was her mouth. <laughs> Cherry Ollins, a friend and fellow Sea Org member, says Leah would complain about the living conditions, the food, and the hard work. When you first get into the Sea Org, they have you do physical labor. A lot of us kids cleaning the uniform shirts. What kind of work were you doing? It could, it, it could go from working in a laundry room to working industrial sanders to... Industrial sanders? Mm-hmm. Leah says things came to a head when she was brought up on ethics charges for her involvement with boys. I allowed my boyfriend at the time, who was like my first boyfriend, to go like this over my shirt. And that was enough to get you... And that was light. That was very light. It wasn't like real, it wasn't a real grab down. Like... <laughs> very hard to have this discussion with a straight face. Sorry. The church says children are no longer admitted into the Sea Org, but that back when Leah was a member, the living conditions conformed to state health codes. The church also says that Leah was dismissed for her inability to maintain the ethical standards related to fraternization. They say Leah petitioned to stay, but failed. Leah and her family say they left voluntarily. Either way, the family stayed in the church and soon ended up in Los Angeles, where Leah launched her acting career and says what she was learning in Scientology proved extremely useful. How helpful was Scientology in terms of getting your acting career started? There's tools that are very, very helpful to you in your life, to you as an actor. I walked into a room where some people might feel, you know, cower in front of a casting director. I wasn't. Scientology helped, and so did her own natural propensity for comedy, so which we saw firsthand in our interview. Look at me, I'm Dan, I'm very serious, look at me. <laughs> With astonishing speed, Leah started landing guest roles on classic shows such as Cheers. You're pregnant. Carla, that is a rude and unfair thing to say. I am pregnant. 
and NYPD Blue. What led up to him stabbing you? Okay, see, what led up to it was we had a fight. He took a knife and he tried to murder me. And then she got the call for the show that would change her career and her life, The King of Queens. Please try being nice to Marie. I am trying. If I weren't trying, she would have a fork sticking out of her neck. The role of Carrie Heffernan, the tough-talking, wise-cracking wife of Kevin James's everyman Doug. Shut up! Shut up! Turned out to be a sitcom match made in heaven. It must have been a buzz. It was amazing. It really was. Her rising star also brought Leah into the orbit of Scientology's most famous member, Tom Cruise, who declined to comment for this report. What were your impressions of him? At first, it's very effusive, it's very loving. You know, it's what are you doing and how are you doing? And yeah, great, 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 great. Leah says her exposure to Cruise, this is them hugging at a movie premiere, opened her eyes to his vast influence within the church. An influence, she says, was exemplified by a call she got one night from a church official. Tom wants you to come over and teach him salsa dancing. She says two high-ranking Scientology officials were there with Tom at his home, and so was his new girlfriend, Katie Holmes. He was, like, forcibly kissing Katie. You know, I said, hey, get a friggin' room. And, uh, well, I was written up for that. That's right, she says one of those officials essentially tattled on her. Leah says she continued to hang out with Cruz, but did not hesitate to speak up when she thought he was damaging the church in the public view, such as this infamous couch jumping incident on Oprah. Have you ever felt this way? What the hell is this guy doing? We need to rein it in. We need to stop all this. And he just needs to be an actor. Like he needs to, okay? I was immediately dealt with. How? Immediately. The only reason you're saying these things is because you have your own transgressions, so you then become guilty. Being critical of Tom Cruise is being critical of Scientology itself. You are a person who is anti the aims and goals of Scientology. You are evil. Leah says she became increasingly dismayed by the fawning attention church officials heaped upon the A-lister, who was extremely close with the head of Scientology, David Miscavige. But despite all that, she says she was genuinely excited when, one day in 2006, Cruz invited her to his wedding with Katie Holmes, a three-day star-studded affair at this grand Italian castle. And when we come back, how the Cruz Holmes wedding would become a crucial turning point in Leah's relationship with the church in which she was raised. You left the wedding on a mission to save Scientology. Right, I thought, I now see where the cracks are in our church. And it's David Miscavige, it's Tom Cruise. They were bringing Scientology down.